Hey kids, it's Mike with Katie. And it's episode 80 of Cup of Red. What are we doing today, Katie? Today is more X-Men. It's X-Men part four. Today on Cup of Red. Okay, so here we are. We are back. It is X-Men Red Nisha part four. Of X-May. I like this X-May, like weird pun thing we got going on it's pretty good uh, we're gonna have to pun everything now oh it's it's happening now going forward it's gonna be we gonna have to just pun palooza pun palooza <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was a fun palooza no it's a pun palooza oh. oh and i'm corny uh so <laughs> so we're uh th- today's episode we're gonna be uh, tackling uh x-men apocalypse x-men dark phoenix and also logan Yes. So before we dig into that, uh, how are you? I'm good. Yeah. Went out and enjoyed some nature today. Nature. Oh, sorry. I was drinking a fantastic it. coffee. <laughs> coffee was more important. Then. It was more important then. <laughs> uh, yeah, we went out and uh, we got to me and uh, kiddo came along Mike with his uh, walks to take his nature pup and figure uh, pictures which was fun and uh, it started out raining but i'm glad we went because it actually was really pretty walking mm-hmm. through the canopy and then the sun came out so that was pretty cool yeah which is really cool you know things are are opening up and being yeah it was, awesome so it wasn't too busy out which was nice too and uh just getting out in some fresh air and that was really enjoyable and so i'm excited for the weather it, it's nice because the weather is this nice temperate you know yeah. going on right now which is it can't make up its mind though it's like Hot, well, cold, yeah, I mean, it was rain. it was raining and then five minutes later the sun was out and, and then it was, it was cold yeah. and then it was it's just all over the place. But uh, yeah. So how have you been? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, me and kiddo have been continuing watching X-Men. Not so much, mm. uh, unfortunately, because uh, Animal Crossing has come into our house. It has invaded our life. It, it pretty much has taken over the child's life he at is, any moment. He's uh, in the Matrix right now. Yeah, he pretty much <laughs> just is jacked into his uh Animal He's like, Crossing. this is my second life. Yeah, and that's when we realized it was the Matrix. I go up there the other night and I find him and he's like, I'm like, what are you doing? I'm vacuuming. I was like, oh good, you can vacuum in the game, you can vacuum in real life. Right? Whoa, <laughs> but, whoa, but, but. <laughs> whoa, whoa. We need to like come up with, I guess, the, the nook miles or the bells. Well, he's decided that now so. he knows more, but he's learned. He, he tried to tell me he's learning from this game. He's like, I'm learning about real life and like money and that things cost things. <laughs> you know, it's not just cheap. He's like, there's a lot. This stuff costs a lot. I'm like, yeah, but you can just go out and like clear cut the forest. And, and <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do to get your your supplies for things. So, right. Sure. You're learning real life. Uh huh. Well, I guess in a way there's a bit of teaching to it. Right? It is because you I mean, there is a matter of gathering. strategy and whatnot. You know what? Opposed to say Sims, which I always play with my cheat code on. Yeah. Um, and he's never he's only ever played it with the cheat code so he can make these fantabulous mansions because yeah. he's got three hundred thousand dollars in the bank account. Opposed to where is that cheat code? I know for where life? is life's cheat code where you can just um, mother load it and <laughs> right. you know, where's my mother load cheat code? Yeah, um, come on, Matrix, get that going. But with this, at least there's no he's not using any sort of cheat at all, mm-hmm. so he is actually having to wait. There is yeah. some patience in it, which is a good thing, so yeah. we'll find a silver lining in there. Now, if the patience would go into him actually like having patience between playing, yeah. And I mean, literally, wants, we're out on our walk, and he's like, "So, an Animal Crossing." So, Animal did you Crossing know an Animal this. Crossing? Oh, oh my god, I'm trying not. I'm trying to be like, this is what matters to him. Deep breath, like this is important, and I don't want to be like, "Oh my god, stop talking about yeah. your game," because I get it when it's exciting for something, and mm-hmm. I'm trying to take advantage of. Then, okay, if I'm gonna listen, he's gonna listen to uh, if I talk about Sims. Then I need to listen to him about that. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like literally all he's talking about, but. He could care less about talking about school, and that's the only thing he's got going on right now. Yeah. So I get it. Yeah. So, uh, so we finished Community. It's over, man. We did. We actually successfully in one month's time binge watched six seasons of a show. It's pretty impressive. Um. Yeah. Because and, and the lack of new episodes to watch has left a little bit of a hole in our. Lives. Yeah, we kind of had a few days where we didn't know what we were going to do. We just wandered around, bumped into the wall. <laughs> Community, community. Beetle positioned it. <laughs> no, which I tried to figure out how I could bring more community into my life. Yeah. Um, I found out that Abed's t-shirts were on Threadless. And because if you didn't know that and you like community, please go out and buy them right now. Because, oh, my God. So can you do that for me? Yeah, I'm working on it. So, you know, 
Uh, they're on sale. They're on sale. Uh, Memorial Day weekend, so by the time the podcast drops, it won't be on sorry. sale. Sorry. Too late. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, but, I will have ordered them for him. <laughs> right? Uh, so, but yeah, tons of them. And I was thinking about it because I was like, you know, I want to be able to have some color and pop and all that that is... Um, won't be uh for work when yeah. i start working whenever that happens um in the future well because some of them are like learning based ones too which is just hilarious they're like still kid friendly yeah there's It'd lots of kids friendly ones and but none of them are actually like license based or anything like that yeah. and also there's nothing that would be bad so and then you're wearing a giant sign that if someone recognizes it you're like okay we can be friends we can hang we can hang <laughs> cool 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 right <laughs> uh <laughs> But yeah, you know what? I was actually impressed with as much as like seasons one through three are the best. Yes. Season four, they make fun of multiple times being the gas leak year. Yeah. Um, because it's not the best. Uh, and then season five still had its bumps. And yeah. season six was getting back to form, but it was kind of But it was like, still weird, right? Yeah, because things had changed. The dynamic changed. And they well, even mentioned Shirley was that. gone then too. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, they, they talk about how different things are. Now that the show the show can't continue be our show can't continue because it's become bloated too many characters to handle yeah and you know the character growth we can't stay stagnant so I actually was really you know I figured because things had gotten a little bit weird too like it was still enjoyable but it had mellowed out I'm like okay I think we're gonna be okay when it ends because it'll be a little bit okay we're we're done with it right but they did a really good job of wrapping it up yeah. in form that fit the show itself and the weirdness of it and the fourth wall breaking of it. Yeah. The, the um, last season almost like every episode breaks the fourth wall. Right. Like there's like, Oh, it's almost like way too much tongue in cheek. Well, like, especially like with the GI Joe episode mm-hmm. with fourth wall. <laughs> the, well, that was fifth season. It was fifth. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, so. okay. Fifth and sixth was still starting to break that. <laughs> yeah. Wall, right. Um, they were starting to blend into whole Abed's reality that they were just in a TV show. Yeah, so I really, I, I did actually really like the finale, and there was a, there was a, the a sufficient amount of sadness closure. but closure all yeah. at the same time, and so it worked out really well. So. Yeah. But now, now they just need a movie. Yeah. Right. Six they just, seasons and a movie. They had their six seasons. Now they need a movie. So. Uh, and a Lego set. Yes, and that's the thing is that there is so this dude Lego Sesame Street. Mm-hmm. I forget what his Lego Ideas handle is. He had created a Lego Ideas community set, mm-hmm. um, and it was the second fastest Lego Ideas to get backed. Yes, in the Lego Ideas history, right behind Minecraft, it beat um, Friends and Big Bang as getting the support. So that so I'm should hoping because Friends of Big Bang were successfully created. Yeah. Then hopefully, as long as they can make, because there's a lot of detail in there, as long as they can find the sufficient price point for it. But hell, yeah. I, I'll figure it out how to buy it. Right. Well, you know, <laughs> even if they didn't do all the side or back, yeah, you know, even it was, if it was just, just the room, the room with the the char- core characters. Yeah. I think that would be a pretty excellent set to have. Oh, yeah. You know, we missed out on the pops because we were behind the times on it, but. You know, I think I think it'd be pretty cool to have that. Yeah. And have everybody. Right. Yeah. That's the thing is having everybody. Well, yeah. So uh, but I was talking to my buddy about I was like, you know, the movie needs to be that um, they make a movie where like Jean, uh, Dean has blah, 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 Jeff has become the Dean. Yes. And has just gone complete business with it. Mm. Gone as like lawyer persona okay. and forgotten the heart because everyone else has left. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, then it needs to like kind of like be like the Muppet movie. Where like Troy shows back up after his long journey because we still don't know what happened yeah, to him. Yeah, Troy just disappeared right? into the ocean. He needs he needs to come back after his his time and see that it's gone like completely like. And now he's actually a man now, of course. Cause... Yeah, yeah. Well, he should show. Or back. he's a pirate. No, no. He needs to sh- <laughs> no, no. He needs to show up wearing a cape to wink and nod that he was Lando. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So then because he... he's a space pirate. <laughs> So then he needs to then be like, he comes there and then, you know, Jeff's gone all business and has mm-hmm. no heart again. Mm-hmm. And then so he needs to go on a road trip and collect everybody like the Muppets. Like the Muppets. Right. And you could have the Dean like a showgirl, like drag queen, you know. Oh, that would be and, fabulous. Right. Because then you could just be completely meta with it and weird. And as they go through and. I like this. Right. Because can you imagine movie? Abed and. uh and um troy driving down the road like you know the- and, and fonzie oh. yeah 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 that would be amazing 
And they, they, I bet you they would do the, there's a fork in a road joke. They totally would, because that's one of the best parts of the Muppet movie ever. So, so that, that's where my mind went, you know. And then it needs to just be a giant paintball battle at the end. Of course, because that's right? the best part of, uh, that, that last episode, the Modern Warfare one, was hilarious. Because yeah. it was just so intense, and I hate how much it makes me want to do that in real <laughs> life. Like, I want to be in a place that just breaks out in, like, a super intense paintball game. Like, why can't we do that? Right? <laughs> I would love to have the, the find a paintball place that isn't, like, just the outdoor, like, you know, snipery, like, mm. you know, but, but like a, like, like community where you're in, like, a school. Yeah. So that's what they need to do. They need, someone needs to take, like, a shutdown mall or something. Well, Lord, there's enough shut down retail, like, old places, right? right? And then just create, create a, a paintball, you know, yes. with, with those type of, like, the handgun stuff, not the big, like, So we need to take, guns. like, the, the old, like, the Sears building that's empty and we just need <laughs> to make a giant paintball arena in some of these places. Yeah. Like, that would bring people to the malls. Yeah, right? You know, go play paintball and go to the food court. You know, <laughs> go get your fro yo, <laughs> fro yo, and, and, and paintball. Oh my gosh! Right? Why not? I like it. So, uh, <laughs> but community is still up there. We have we decided we haven't picked up anything else right now. New to we gotta watch. clean up a little bit of things. Uh, yeah, we gotta clean up our thing. We started watching uh, what we do in shadows again. Uh, Realize we cannot binge that. Yeah, it's definitely. I like the show. I really do find it funny. But like we watched three episodes and then I was just like, I was done. Yeah. It's so dry. Right. Like, and it's not something you laugh out loud at. Yeah. And it's also not relatable at all. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, hope it, it's <laughs> hopefully it's not right. I don't know. Uh, it's pretty related to that ghost business thing. <laughs> yes. That's ectoplasm everywhere. <laughs> it's dripping from the ceiling. <laughs> so. Well, me being we stuck with two boys in the house. Yes. Totally relatable. Not you. <laughs> That fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Anyways, uh, but yeah, what we do in shadows is really funny. Yeah. So, but we haven't picked up something else yet. I was looking around, but I wanted to be able to clean up. Well, we want to watch the. Yeah, we got to clean up. We got Harley Quinn's to watch. We got to finish Supernatural. Yes, yeah, so we can actually when they do show up, and then it's all uh, we can watch it live. It's like the only show up. that the CW is bringing back. Well, because they they pushed off Riverdale and Supergirl, so they could all all the other ones. All Everything the other ones. is cool. Well, it makes sense. Supernatural being in its final. Yeah, so like the last with, right? seven episodes, like the only thing that's going to premiere next fall. For CW, right? Because they, what they did though is they bought up a other other licenses no. that have already been aired on streaming. Oh, so like Swamp Thing is going to play on CW now. Oh, okay. All right, so they're going to do some stuff like that. Oh, okay, uh, hmm. which is weird. So which, it'll, be, it'll be a weird fall in yep. general because of, of things like that. Yeah, but, but I guess anything. A lot of people get to catch up on things or find things like yeah. we actually like use netflix mm. you know we don't really we didn't really use it a whole lot before and yeah i'll exactly. actually start be, being able to yeah so but you know what's going to be coming out is hbo max yes hbo max is coming and uh you know they've got looney tunes and all those kind of things that are going to be exclusive to the service mm -hmm. unfortunately up in canada it is big who knows mm -hmm. because it's parted out to crave so mm -hmm. we'll have to see. But one thing that did happen this last week was release a Snyder Cut actually is happening. Dun, dun, dun. Actually happening. Yeah, which is pretty wild. You know, the the group that had been chanting this for years, four years, finally got their I just think it's dues. like, oh, well, crap, we can't record new movies, so let's bring out old stuff. Well, you know, what's funny is it's because, like, and I don't want to step on people's toes and all that, but it's the idea that. The fact that they're saying they're going to put 20 to 30 million dollars into this mm -hmm. to make it a reality proves that it isn't fully there. Yeah. They need to do things to make this version final. So Well, it shows that it wasn't a Snyder cut, it was a Snyder vision. Yeah. More of anything. It wasn't like it was all this final and they just chopped some deleted scenes out of yeah. it and that's it and they just want to put the scenes back in. It's like no, his movie wasn't fully Complete. made at all. Yeah. So once he left and all that, they reshot with Whedon and, and changed the story, changed, right? Yeah. So because he said a fraction of what we saw in that, which it also doesn't correspond with him also saying, though, that he's never watched it. So I'm confused. Yeah, he should because I'm sorry, he should watch it. And then he's the only one that should be able to definitively say how mm. much of it was his and how much. Was I'm it. assuming because Momo has been a big supporter of having his vision come out. Yeah, he's probably said stuff to yeah. him then. Why? You know? Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see once that hits. There's tons of rumors flying 
unfortunately, as much as it was like a pain in the butt to constantly see the, the, the cheering for this to come out, now it's the opposite way. Every single site's saying their rumors and their what's going to happen and what do you want to see and all that. So they're going to hype this thing so it's much gonna be just that you like, potentially is going to ruin it. Yeah. But it sounds like it's going to be a long cut. Uh, it sounds like it could be close to four hours by the time they're done with whatever they're doing with it, which seems huge. Yeah. Uh, but then it also has had a whole bunch of other people chime in saying that they wish that their original cuts would be uh, released, like David Ayer. Yeah. And there's already been that for Suicide Squad. Yeah. Um, and then even, you know, Paul Fig threw in his hat saying he wanted his three hour Ghostbuster cut released. Oh, geez. Which so I gonna, don't think is going to help. It's going to be interesting to see then how many more people try to. Our, our director is going to be trying to push more for some more yeah. of their vision, which in, in reality isn't a bad thing. I think sometimes producers do step in and ruin visions mm-hmm. and, and you can see how that ruins um, relationships with directors or, or whatnot. And how and it's happened a little bit more frequently now. Yeah. Right. So I think a lot more are less to take chances on, mm-hmm. especially on established licenses. Yeah. Right. But I think one thing that streaming is going to do for things is, as much as it sucks that we're in the streaming wars and all these new things, it's the new cable because everyone's seeing the peacocks coming out with theirs oh, yeah. and like everyone's going to have their own. Right. But it, what I think is going to allow is, it's going to allow for things like this. It's going to allow for different cuts to show up yeah. that aren't going to cost studios that much money, but are going to build them revenue. Yeah. Right. And then they, they're able to then test things. Well, it sounds funny, but a four hour cut for something like that, if you wanted to split it up in two, you could. Mm-hmm. You know, it's much easier for us to be able to watch something like that at home and yep. be able to t- take. A well, chance. they're they're talking that they could. It could be thirty minute. It could be an hour. Yeah, like or, into yeah. episodes. They might turn yeah. break them down into episodes instead of being one single. And we cut. all know that most people will just binge watch it, but at least they have that option. I right? would, if yeah. you know, I would too. Yeah, for something like that, I would. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're supposed to be you know, like, going to actually see his vision of dark side and all those kind of things. So, yeah. you know, it's going to be interesting to see, and it's going to see what precedent this brings to mm-hmm. the world of entertainment. Yeah. Um, you know, I just would like to see if it would just shape up DC's movies. I, that's a, that's a question. Well, I will have. It, if, if there is success on this one and if they do for some reason, pursue the suicide squad cut, would the, powers of B at Warner Brothers actually see that the directors are not completely crazy with their visions and try to step back from all of their edits and their changes, or are they still going to be doing the same stuff and just... No, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to... The theatrical cut will be will be its own thing. And then... And then, and then four it'll years right later. over to the streaming service with the director's cut. Ah, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> at least that's what I think Warner Brothers would do. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... That's what I'm curious to see. I'm curious to see what'll happen and what it'll be like. Cause, cause honestly, what if the, what if Jeff Schneider's, uh, Scott Schneider's, I don't know why I said Jeff. Zach Snyder. I, I am like all over the place with names. <laughs> names don't matter. Pick a Snyder. Pick a Snyder. <laughs> but like, I, Scott Snyder is a person yeah. related to DC. <laughs> um, but, uh, like, what if it turns out to be fantastic? Yeah. Like, that's, that's the question I have. What if it turns out, we all tune in and we're just like, Mind. holy crap. Yeah. Why wasn't this released in theaters? Yeah. What, you know, and it blows our mind. Will they pursue more or are we all just going to be stuck there with this one off and yeah. not see, is it just going to be like Warner brother and DC's all their other stuff where they're just ones off. Yeah. And like that, that's the thing. Like, so there's our little, uh, you know, rant on that. <laughs> you were here for X-Men and we just did something completely different. Yeah, well, we should get into X Men. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so, X Men. That's why we're here. Let's talk about X Men. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, we did X Men Apocalypse. Yes. Now, I remember when I watched this movie, I left the theater mad. And, like, we never watched we it again. We never since. watched it again. And, which is weird. You know, I usually give it at least a second chance. Yeah. Uh, so I was excited to watch it again. Yeah. Because, because we had never watched it again. It had been so long and I wanted to see if I was still as angry or if what, what it was. Well, I also right? wanted to find out what I was angry about. Like, cause yeah. I couldn't even remember. I was just like, it's crap. Was like, why did we, why did we hate it so bad? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so X-Men Apocalypse, I, uh, I wasn't nearly as ang- angry as yeah. I felt. Um, you know, it's still. Well, here, the story is basically Apocalypse, Aben, Sir, whatever, Sung, Ra, Doody. Why did you even try? I don't know. <laughs> I, I shouldn't try with words today. 
so he, uh, you know, the, the, basically the idea that is supposedly the first mutant yeah. idea. And uh, he... Uh, well, he's been around through the end of all times, basically. Yeah. Before that, he was talking because he talked about actually teaching them how to do things. Yeah. So. And uh, so it, the movie starts being in Egypt and he's going to transfer his body. Ancient Egypt. Let's yeah. Make sure Ancient it's Egypt. Sorry. So, yeah, he has transference. So he constantly, he lives forever by essentially transferring into new mutants. Yeah. Absorbing and, their you know, powers. Absorbing their power that way. So every time he transfers over, he gets their body and their essence. And so he has amassed an insane amount of power because he just takes over that many people. Yeah. So basically all of, so I, I assume then transference was his original mutant ability. Yeah. And all the powers that he has and all the people that he's taken. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So um, that w- I will admit that scene, though, was ridiculous. It was so cool. Because <laughs> it's so over the top. Yeah. Because one, they needed like these weird golden like tip on this pyramid thing to like liquefy. That's, what the, that's why the gold, the pyramids were tipped with gold, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you know this is all about this is t- teaching us ancient Egypt mythology? I don't know if I should like <laughs> what you right now. <laughs> uh, this is awesome. <laughs> but like, you know, and like it was all like circuitry. And it's I don't all understand like, how the gold like melted from the sun almost like. Yeah. That's what it kind of looked like. It looked into like it was all him lit up. To then go into. And then it was defying gravity and going up and lifting people. And yeah. yeah. That really. It, it went to like weird ancient science fiction yeah right yeah. away was, like here i know i know here we're talking about a movie with mutants and all that but like but it was like over the top with it, it became magical yes right um but then so then these this whole group of guys like call yeah, the out they make the whole like cuckoo sound and they break this rock and this rock goes flying down the side into the pyramid and starts taking out they have a pyramid. self-destruct button yeah. built into the pyramid that would have taken god knows how long to build yeah no one knew about this yeah and it was just it was so ridiculous to see like it was a cool action scene but when you sat back and thought about it it was just like wait what it was a lot happening in one go too yeah i I did read though there was like only 25 people actually in that scene the rest were all cg oh wow yeah so all that crowd and stuff was made by weird yeah copy and paste i guess huh so the same person is CG'd in there and just a whole bunch a of bazillion crows, you know? times. But oh. um but but yeah, so the, yes, yeah, so then he gets covered with rock and then we zip. I like how his his protector lady, her power, you know, Held just on. as soon as she dies and then conveniently the rock says stop falling. Yeah. You know, and it's just very convenient for it, right? And yeah. All of that then hasn't been able to be found for anything. So. Yeah, so he hibernates all the way till the eighties. Yes. Um so and then there's there's apparently been always like some ancient uh groups that have been searching for him yeah. and believe in him so there, he has a cult of its own right yeah. and uh yeah it's uncovered and and then all of a sudden he shows up so what are your thoughts because i mean i agree i was not as angry about it watching it again mm-hmm. um and but I could still feel some of that irritation for, for certain things. Um, but then a lot of it I actually really enjoyed and I was really kind of surprised. I'm like, when we watch Wolverine origins, yes, immediately. I'm like, (laughs) yes, I know why I was angry at this. And this one was, was interesting. But then the more we talked about it, then I'm like, okay, now I can remember now why I was more irritated with stuff. But I know a lot of it was the design of apocalypse himself. It was apocalypse that really, he was so, he was so meek. Like I didn't think there was anything wrong with like, he was, he should have been imposing. Yeah. Right. But he was just, you know, a little guy. Yeah. And, even his you know, voice the fact was that you little. Like melt him into people into the wall wasn't imposing enough. It was, yeah, that was terrifying. Yeah, but the fact that he could just walk around and no one really noticed who he was, as he, you know, his kiddo referred to him as like a Sith. Yeah, he said right? he looks like Darth Sidious. Yeah, and like he just walked around and you, he didn't seem scary. He never got bigger. He well, never, he always like, reminded me of like Dark Side with on DC side, right? Yeah. So then to me, it was always supposed to be like this very imposing, more of a giant yeah. man. Right? Yeah. So, right. So, so that was kind of weird to see again, still like, and everything's just so ornate. Like yeah. every, his whole costume, there's like layer upon layer upon layer. And like, it seemed too much like, yeah. Know, 
That's why well, Levi's costume he looks so because much he like, a like robot stand. without explaining. It didn't make sense as to why he. Well, he does look, look like a robot, though. Yeah, I know. Right? But with the storyline itself, yeah, with him living for so long, it doesn't really make sense how he's never changed his form. Like, yeah, I don't know. It just didn't. He never got bigger, fit. and like you know, he always yeah. wanted to be. Yeah. So there was there's a few things that were kind of weird. Like you know, I will admit, I really did like. Um, Storm in this movie. Yes. I, I liked the new Storm. It was kind of cool to have her with the mohawk, mm-hmm. right? And it was a nice way to kind of also give her the white hair. Yeah. Uh, why she suddenly had white hair um, when she was getting the enhanced powers from mm-hmm. Apocalypse. I thought that was kind of cool. And I, the actress that played played her, I thought, did a really good job. Mm-hmm. And that extended even into Dark Phoenix, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Psylocke, I really thought she looked really cool. Her um, costume was incredibly on point out of all of the X-Men movies. Out of, yeah. The most in perfect, you know, on point yeah, costume. Yeah. yeah, she's the most comic like, how accurate. Did you, do that? you know, barely no lines, barely any scenes, but But her costume's there. Was on point and her powers <laughs> were on point and she had the sword and does all this cool stuff. Opposed to Angel, who was just super, super like lazy on their costuming because he had jeans and a tank top on. Yeah, well, they give him a they give him a leather jacket at sure. one point, uh-huh. right? Um, yeah, it was really weird because like it was more of them playing with the mythology and placing it how they needed to. Yeah. They decided they wanted to have him as Archangel. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I'm kind of disappointed that he didn't get the full Archangel look. Yeah. Where once he got his metal wings, where like you know the suit and like the 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 blue face and all that, like yeah, that would have been cool. That would have been really cool to see, yeah. right? It would have fit con- having a colored face with how Apocalypse looked. Mm-hmm. You know, having something like that, like why right. not? And they just he just like shaves his head and yeah, gives himself a, the mohawk like Storm and then yeah. pieces out. Uh, I do think that the story with Magneto is pretty epic. Um, Dealing with, you know, the fact that he was in hiding, trying so to be sad. right. And then seeing what happens once they they kill his family. Yeah. You know, this power in that was pretty incredible. Yeah. Kiddo was just like, oh, my gosh. Right. I'm impressed with how, you know, he has his back turned. I think that's impressive to see when he takes him out. It's just well, it, it shows, shows how much his power is fueled by rage. Too. Yeah. Right. And and how easy it has gotten now for him mm-hmm. to do stuff. So, yeah, I think that's really cool to see. Uh, and you know, there's, there's a lot of good, it's one of those movies where there's a lot of good, but a lot of bad. Yeah. And the, the bad is just, I think the bad really comes from the fact that there's a bit of laziness to it Mm -hmm. and a bit of the fact that they didn't continuity check any of their stuff with other things or just even just kind of like they tried to put too much in again. Right. And yeah. Where it's just like, well, because now you have, you introduce so many new characters mm -hmm. again. We let's let's introduce not only new X Men, but then we also have all the people from the Apocalypse plus all the previous one. Well, like no, like oh. with that showed up with Apocalypse. Like we have Storm and Psylocke now, yeah. and Angel as well. Because yeah. we have three new moons over there. We have Gene. We have Scott. We have mm-hmm. all of these. You're dealing with um, Scott learning his powers. Yeah, we have Scott brand new. We have we have Gene. Um, you know, we have we have all this this change with that. And, and then you have the old the old guard from Magneto Beast, mm-hmm. Charles and. Mystique, and, and Mystique. Right? And so you have, there's, again, we have too oh, and much Alex. going on. And Alex. Yeah, we have too much going on. Plus now, of course, there's a major threat. Mm-hmm. And and it's just, yeah, there, there's... You, oh, and Nightcrawler. Yeah, you can't and pick a storyline, right? Yeah, right. So, so, so yeah, they just, I think they, they, they don't want to have to, like... I think that's the one thing that I realized with watching them, too. The movies, the X-Men movies. Mm-hmm. Is where, where I think that the first ones did work. Mm-hmm. Was they didn't introduce too many until the third one. Yes. Right? And even still, that one was a little still fo- more focused. Yeah. These This later kind of trilogy or branch off, this is what I'm noticing, especially with Dark Phoenix idea, was that it was like they, and not so much Dark Phoenix, but this one was, was like they just decided they were just going to keep bloating it without taking people away too much. Mm-hmm. Or if we did take people away, we killed them off screen and give them a flash and like a briefing like oh they died you know yeah. like days of futures past it was yeah. like oh they all died by the government yeah this is just seen well in it's like, like if, if you really liked a certain character you want to give them a shout out give them a background nod or something yeah. like that that's fine that's what they did with the first three. right <laughs> with kitty pride, with kitty for two pride. Like, 
who is always just referred to as the girl who could walk through walls. Yep. And, uh, you know, you can do stuff like that, but then pick the story that you really want to care and yeah. develop those characters so you can actually care about them. Exactly. Right? And that that's something for me when we talk about Phoenix. That yeah. Are- well, and I really liked, opposed to... Because I really, watching the original X-Men trilogy, I had a hard time liking Jean. And I remember I, I never really liked her to begin with. And mm. this it, it made me more irritated with her. I don't like her. I don't like her. She just seems very, so unsure of herself. So there's zero confidence. And mm. I, I it really bothered me. And I was, I liked that even in Apocalypse, how much Jean, she was still worried about her power. Yeah. But she exuded more confidence about her power. And almost a more strength than she did in the original X-Men trilogy. Yeah. So then when she does move into the Phoenix, at least I actually have a little bit more understanding about it, but mm-hmm. I really liked how she broke through with, I like, I like the ending with apocalypse with her and, and, um, and Xavier and all that sort of stuff. So. Yeah. There's some, yeah, I say there's some fantastic scenes. Like, you know, it's really interesting to see apocalypse, you know, basically tell Magneto that you do realize you don't just control metal, right? I love that, that it actually acknowledged the fact that his mutant ability is magnetism yeah. and not metal yeah. uh, movement. I really like that. Yeah, and that's the thing, is that it's always been he's the mag- master of magnetism. Yes. Right? So he, he controls Which is why fields. I also believe that his name should be Magneto. Magneto. But, you know, whatever. English, let's just change whatever we feel like. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't take him seriously if his name was Magneto. Why? Because it sounds hilarious. Magneto seems more... And more been... neat. <laughs> Pun palooza. <laughs> uh, I set you with that one up. Damn. I'm sorry, people. <laughs> um, but I just, yeah, I find... Uh, <laughs> You just can't get over it. Um, I I loved uh, again a common theme. Um, I, I still love Xavier and Eric. Um, you, and you guys, a specific thing you liked about Charles in this movie? I loved his purple sweater and his hair. I like. I realized like I have the oh my god he's just so adorable like crush on him. <laughs> so there you go, James McAvoy. Oh my god, she like, wants to like squeeze your little cheeks and tell you you're so fluffy. <laughs> you're so pretty. Um, yeah, I just I, I I love their characters in this whole series. Yeah, and I that was one thing I didn't want to look up. I wanted to look up when Split was versus this. Oh yeah, uh, you were saying that it was because in this one here he still had he seemed like he was had some extra feminine movements, flourishness. Yeah, that reminded maybe me. Maybe it was the the eighties. It was the eighties that was doing that. <laughs> the eighties. It's the, the flowy hair and the purple sweater. No, but like he, you know, he reminded me of He's some joking. of his characters from Split. It right? very well could be. So, um, but but yeah, I, I I liked again seeing Eric's power, and it was even it was even more fun to see him messing with the Earth's magnetic field. Yeah, it, they were, they came out the same year, so, so they would have been probably yeah. They would have been around the time over on that either either in pre development or after development. Yeah, but just the way he carried himself, he seemed more like his split character in some I, of his scenes. I, I I can see that now when I think about it because he was a little bit different. Yeah, you know, you know, and I don't. It wasn't bad. It was no. just like I, I noticed a few times like he moved differently. Like yeah. he was more. His moves seemed more purposeful yes. with his arms and his hands yeah compared to what later on prior, ones, prior and yeah. after yeah it was like so specific little ptsd from split maybe yeah maybe <laughs> uh but yeah i i and we we had talked about how cool it would have been if magneto's uh hair had gone white after he had been doing all of the yes. hard intense like Focus bubble that he had when where he was, was trying to destroy the world, right? Yeah, and like that's where that's where they, they See, should. Like have... that's what's so cool. I mean, he was actually trying to destroy the world. He's like super awesome, right? Like, I mean, trust me, I think it's terrible, but it's just super. Yeah, cool well, because like Storm's hair, you know, went it white. went white. So why why couldn't this... Magneto go? And and, it, and I I want to tell you know maybe they just felt like he was just too powerful. It wasn't stressful for him. He wanted to do it, but I think that's a cop out. I think it's just I just think it would have been cool. it would have been cool, right? Because it would have been that nod of him. Like, like, mm-hmm. you know, because that would have been a lot of, lot of power to be. Expressing. Well, yeah, especially because because the, the, the one when he first tried with, around him. with with Auschwitz there, he looked like he was going to poop himself. <laughs> right. Like he like all red and yeah. like, you know, sweat starts dripping from his brow yeah. and he's just grunting. Right. So it should just. Thanks for giving me that. By the way. <laughs> Fastbender squatting in the woods. <laughs> 
Um, but you know, yeah, <laughs> I, you know, it, I, yeah, you know, I want to talk positively about it because I wasn't nearly as mad about it, but no. I have my things where I'm a little frustrated. Like, like the, like Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler, I wasn't a big fan of how meek he is. I don't like yeah. how he's been meek through the entire series. Yeah, he's never had, he's never had confidence. Yeah. And I want my swashbuckling Nightcrawler. I want, yeah, the, I want pirate right? Nightcrawler. Um, so that, that's something that it would be. And even still, I'm not a big fan of Beast still doping. No, and I'm not like it either. the fact that, you know, he's the, the Hulk pretty much where he just need, can turn it he can just turn his mutant ability on and off yeah right like i i don't yeah it's weird like that like, i understand his budget constraints most likely yeah but, but it's like if you want to make beast then commit to making beast right just commit to it and be like yeah we have a blue character it's gonna happen well they do with nightcrawler right so unless it's holt saying that you know i need to see my face then you know what oh i oh, have oh. i have words for you <laughs> Be a little less douche. <laughs> Be a little less douche. Exactly. Um, you want to play a blue character? Play a blue character. Right? Uh, but you know what? I think one of the standout scenes, though, has to be um, Quicksilver. Oh, yeah. When he gets to the X-Mansion after it explodes. Yes. That uh, is... It's hilarious and dramatic and, like, horrific all at the same time, considering everything is literally mm-hmm. blown, being blown up. Um Kiddo loved that scene. He loves Quicksilver in these movies. In these movies, like he just thought it was great because there is that just a bit of humor, right? Yeah. And this is what a Flash movie should be. Yes, every it should time be I saw two him, and a half like, hours like, of just slow mo, fast running. Like, because you can't even see that in the TV show. Yeah, and this is why I stopped watching the whole TV show, right? So I think that's what needs to happen. Is if they if they did a Flash movie, how they did those Quicksilver scenes, right? It would be amazeballs, uh-huh. right? Um, just for the fact that he's he's moving so fast, he's moving things, he's jumping, he's grabbing, he's flinging. I like and seeing then, the things move at different speed to see the relative to him. Yeah. That some things are moving faster and mm-hmm. some things aren't moving at all. Exactly. You know? And I think that's really cool to see. And then, yeah. then when, when everything kicks back in, you see the after effect of it. Yeah. Right? And I... I'd totally be all in on a movie, like I say, like a Flash movie that would be like that. Yeah. Because I think that would be really fantastic. Uh-huh. Instead of just seeing somebody just like you don't want blur. to see. I don't want to see a blur. I want to see the, the interaction, speed right? Of, of, yeah, because that's the cool part. And I think that's the one thing that they did get right with that character. Yes. As goofy as they made him be with with you know the the rock band look of him and mm-hmm. all that. That I think think they really did a good job introducing him because they make it fun but not being like over the top like he's not like being like um super immature Mm -hmm. he's still just getting stuff done like he still is when he needs to get something done he realizes he he just goes and does it yeah and that's the thing is that i think it's the idea that he's just buzzing about because it's normal because there's nothing to do and then when something happens and he does it yes without without thinking almost right yeah so where i liked almost more of the costume that the MCU's war at mm-hmm. the end, at the very end, mm-hmm. you just got a guy that just zip by people in that. You didn't yes. really get the same feeling, right? Yeah. So it's 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 kind of interesting to see that that's something that I think that that they did do a good job with, and they yeah. spent the money in the proper place to create an epic scene, right? yeah, exactly. and they're memorable scenes. Mm-hmm. Watching those, you know, so like the dog with the pizza, yeah, yeah, that was. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so as we watched it, you know, Kiddo yet again just loves seeing Magneto's power yeah. and how intensified it was. Yeah. Um, he really likes Scott in these, in this, the first class, like the, the new series here with this one. He uh, opposed to the old one. Yeah. Uh, his, it fits his kind of vision of what he yeah. knows from the, the cartoon better. Yeah. So he really likes that. My biggest thing is I just don't like the guy that always looks like he's like going to cry. Yeah. He literally looks like he's going to cry in every scene. <laughs> and it's the weirdest thing. Like, like <sighs> Marsden had the look down to be able to wear that, that visor and not yeah. look like he was going to cry. Like yeah. he looked like he could have been a leader. Yeah. This kid he does not look it, like he's, he's, he's definitely still a kid. Yeah. And it's like, I, I feel mean for saying it, but like, he just looked like he was going to cry in every <laughs> scene. <laughs> it doesn't get any better in Dark Phoenix. No. Either. Yeah, his mouth's always half open, and he just, you know, I don't know if, if it was that he couldn't see through that visor, so he just was like, ah, oh, what's going on, guys? Am I on set today? I don't know. Where am I? But. <laughs> what? That's Mike's thoughts on Scott. <laughs> 
I think Marsden was it was got the shaft for the, I the original. And I you think. could tell it wasn't his acting. It was yeah. the storyline yeah. that, that made Scott so irritating in yeah. that one. And I, I don't mind, I, you know, I don't, this kid, he does a good job in, he's the, he's the ready player one kid, right? Oh yeah. And he does a good job where it is, but I think it's just, just the, his look. Yeah. He's always like, you can see his brow is always furled. Yeah. Like, so I don't know if it just wasn't, the prosthetic wasn't fitted right. And it was like, maybe, maybe they wanted him to be like that. Maybe he was trying to be like the, the slightly pouty, you know, duck face all the time. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but one scene, one scene that is fantastic in this movie uh -huh. is, is the Weapon X scene. <laughs> oh my gosh. He was terrifying. Right. Like that was, that was a, uh, you know, I love the look of panic on Stryker's face because he's yeah. always so self-assured and like always in control. And it was the oh shit. Yeah. And then he just what pieces out. Happened. And then he just leaves a use complete slime ball. Yeah. Like. He just just up and goes. But uh, yeah, that was, the, <laughs> you know, it was like, you could tell the way we talk with things. He's like, this looks like a horror movie. You can make a maze out of this. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> The kid's starting to name mazes. <laughs> yeah, right? I was like, I was like, that's fantastic. He's like, yeah, just have a bunch of dead bodies and scratches in the wall. Yeah. And then have the Wolverine pop out. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's actually a really good idea. <laughs> right? <laughs> Escape from Weapon X, right? right? Like. So I thought that was, uh, that was pretty awesome. And this is the first, first time though that you get more bloody weapon x yeah because like every other time that you've seen wolverine fight someone it's been no blood mm -hmm. right even in even in um the wolverine mm -hmm. right there yeah, was nothing, right right this is the first time you see blood right mm -hmm. in that um in those scenes yeah which i think was interesting yeah right so but yeah the idea that they they free him out and they're like you know what is it you know and he, you know yeah. So. Well, I like that they're like, oh, there's an animal in there. And it was mm -hmm. like, as soon as he did that, I was like, oh, yeah, Wolverine's in there. Right. And he, his, really cool. his costume, too, is really cool because it's reminiscent of um, the old when they were like using the VR stuff to mm -hmm. like hypnotize him. And try that to was so brutal when he pulls like screws out of his torso yeah. and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Ugh. Except for his mullet. His mullet was pretty bad. It was. It, yeah. was, it, was, it was. And then he just runs off into the wilderness. Yeah. So like. That's what's interesting with having the new timeline, right, of, like, what happened to that Wolverine? Like, uh -huh. where does that Wolverine fall, fit in, right? Yeah. So. Uh, but any other thoughts on, on Apocalypse? Um, you know what? I'm, I just, I'm, I'm happy that I'm not as angry about it yeah. as I thought I was. So it, it kind of feels nice to not have that a un anger that apparently was unknown for. Must have been, there must have been something else something when we saw it. Must have been, like, something with audience maybe or i don't yeah something made us really irritated yeah. with it right so so i'm happy that it's that it's not that way that feeling anymore um and i know we know it could be better but yeah oh the, you know what there's a few things um the fact that the phoenix power actually shows up at the end yes. when she takes them well, all see, and i really like that scene i think it's yeah. really awesome to see her power with that um and it was like, oh, this will be really cool. And then they ignore the fact that it was a phoenix power. Like it shows the bird, uh -huh. right? Then so it's showing that it's actually her. Yeah. Which was kind of wild to see. Yeah. And the other thing I thought that was really cool was the end with the fact that they had their like, not, they had a 90s-esque style costume when they're all in the danger room mm. ready to train. Yeah. And everyone has something that's very... Modern Nightcrawler looked kind of like yeah he had the red, the red and he had the Mystique white had white on her yeah and then Scott had the the cross body yeah. thing and all that so it was like it was like so it had promise they showed these costumes those costumes are friggin awesome looking like yeah. they're beautiful looking um it's really sad that we didn't get to see and then them at some anymore. point within ten years they burned up and they changed them yeah I guess <laughs> um and then the end credit scene they showed. Essex Company yes. stealing Wolverine's blood, um, and that was supposed to be a tie for Mister Sinister uh, that never happened. That also never showed up. Yeah, right. So, uh, but you know, I wasn't as disappointed with it. it. It's not at the top of my X Men watching, yeah. but it definitely. Was, but I would actually watch it again yeah. without without being like, oh god, we gotta watch this again. I guess next X Men. Next X Men. Apparently, <laughs> I'll watch it again. No, so. no, we got we got something different. So um, yeah, there's gotta be a different M. <laughs> I don't know that 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 would go better with March. Yeah. Okay. So. So well, here we go. But yeah. So yeah, you know, it wasn't wasn't nearly as bad. Like I wasn't nearly. So then we moved on to. We went to Dark Phoenix. So Dark we Phoenix. weren't gonna watch this one. Because I refused to pay for it. Yeah. 
Um, as then, which was funny because like, you know, but then I, you know, you, you made a good point. Like it's unfair to have kid to watch all of this and then not be able to make up his own mind on this movie. Yeah. Because through the deals, HBO has the Fox movies for a couple years still. Yeah. Uh, so, but it was only $5 yeah. for a cable service to rent, which and we've never paid for it before because the last time we watched it, we got through the library. Yeah. So we got to rent it for free. So you know what? Okay, fine. So we did this and, and I thought, you know what? It does make sense for us to be able to watch this right afterwards because we didn't watch apocalypse before we watched our mm-hmm. Phoenix last time. So kind of have it all blended in and, and have that. Um, so, Surprisingly, again, with this one, I wasn't as irritated with it as yeah. I remember being like, oh, God, what did we watch? And for for me not saying I wanted to pay for it again. Right. <laughs> um, so I was impressed on how much I was OK with it. Um, and I don't know if it maybe it was because you just got to see some of those characters and I was trying to pick out the, the positives of seeing them again. Mm. Um, but there's still a lot wrong with it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so. it is. It- it definitely still is a bit of a wreck only because it's forced. It's too fast, too soon. And this is where this is where I believe that the new series of X films made their mistakes. The fact that each movie takes place in a different decade. Yes. No one has aged. That was a huge thing. It's like how they all look the same yeah. age. And that's something that Kiddo even noticed. He's like, even wait. Gene and Scott. It's supposed to be 10 years. Are you kidding me? Do you not realize what 10 years does to someone who's younger? Like, so there's a huge they're difference. They're basically saying everyone that's a mutant ages slower, slowly. Right? That's what that's what this is coming across as. But that was the thing that, that did bug me is that, you know. Hank looks the same as he did in the 60s. So <laughs> that dope stuff that he's taking is like impressive. Right? <laughs> you should Mark sell that. <laughs> Uh, but even Kiddo noticed that, and he—that yeah. was something he questioned. He was like, "He's like, wait a minute, wasn't this supposed? Isn't this supposed to take place ten years after the last one?" He's yeah. like, "Yeah." Well, and it's very—it's missing a movie between Apocalypse yeah. and Dark. Phoenix. And that's where I feel that, like, with, what happened to those awesome costumes, right? Because <laughs> now we've got the new X Men costumes uh-huh. that appeared in the comics in the two thousands uh-huh. that were a dire- direct um, mandate to tie kind of like the movies mm. make them more black and right so they mm-hmm. gave them the x's and all that it oh, was okay. all tied into grant morrison's new x-men with frank craig oh okay um but i don't i think the mistake is still having mystique on the team when they go to space mm. in the opening mm-hmm. because it it still feels like it's just a direct sequel to apocalypse because she's still commanding everyone's just taking her orders Mm -hmm. and nobody seems like they are thinking for themselves and a 10-year gap scott should should have been the leader yes he should have been the leader he was yeah by this time he wasn't at all in any sort of position to be a leader whatsoever yeah he and and that was the thing is that that they should have gone to space they should have done that and that's when they could have kept the same thing. Mystique could have came and been like, Charles, what the heck were you thinking? Sending them up into space and doing this and being mad at all of them. They could have still had that that yeah. moment and having her then have to come back. Well, because at the same right? time, like, why suddenly was this the tipping point for her to be like, yeah. no, we shouldn't be doing stuff like this. Yeah. And so the, there wasn't enough. And you're right. There's there's a movie that's missing that explains. Well, it's been, OK, it, it doesn't explain where this Phoenix power that he suddenly pushed her to unlock the end of Apocalypse. And then we've never talked about it again, nor does he ever refer to um, it being inside of her and this intense power in the Dark Phoenix as well. Mm. When things start going wrong, it's never like, oh, I wonder if it's this power that's showing up or anything like that. Yeah. Like they, she, they, she they completely forgot that in. That's where my that's where my problem for this film starts is that, yeah. that it, it, it's ignoring its all continuity and within itself, right? Mm. You know, and yeah, that that's what really bugged me. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, it it's not as bad as I thought. You know, it has it it's, has some good. Key it shows scenes. that Gene is still very much a child. Yes, which you know, I I like that they're pointing out uh, you can see what Xavier did wrong by not having her face any sort of her problems. Any of her trauma. And that's a, a commentary on our life in general for humanity is... is we'd how, rather hide it. We'd rather hide it and how 
more how much more damaging it can be when we hide something like that rather than work through face it and off. deal with yeah. it and face with our fear, our trauma, our grief, whatever it is. Um, that blocking it off is never the answer. And that's something that, that was powerful when Mystique dies. Yes. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, the fact that Beast confronts him and says, you know, tell me that you're wrong. Yeah. And your choice you made was wrong, and he won't say he's wrong. Yeah. And that shows then even still, even with how Jean learned, because then they're saying that Charles basically was the father to Jean, mm-hmm. right? Uh, that, you know, she doesn't feel that she's wrong. Her choices aren't wrong, yeah. which gives her that spoiled brat persona. I can just do whatever I want. Yeah. When that dark Phoenix power takes over mm-hmm. and she just gets mad and I just want to do what I want to do and I hate you guys and mm-hmm. you're everyone's against me. Right. So it definitely does show it's like a it's like a puberty thing almost yeah. in full force of like of what teenagers experience. Yeah. Right? Especially. You know, with being so traumatized and having, you know, a loaded gun in yeah. your hands, right? Exactly. So I did like the scene where, as a child, when Xavier said, well, here's a gift, and he gives I her the pen. That. And he's like, he's like, you could either draw a great picture or you could poke someone in the eye. It's what you do with that gift, right? Yeah. And I that thought was that was scene. really beautiful. It's an excellent yeah. way to think about it. Um, any sort of tool that we have in our world um, or action or ability or anything can be used in that same Good exact connotor- yep. you know, connotation. And I think that's a great way to think about it, um, that it really is the user. Um, it's going to depend on it. And it's also then, of course, the, the teacher of that user. It's also having that impact mm-hmm. on it, though, too, right? Um, that if you're not taught properly how to contain it and use it powerfully um, and be understanding of the the risk that is involved with that tool um, and the positives that can be used and the things that you have to watch out for to make sure it's not improperly used. I mean, there's a lot of depth to that story yeah. right there, right? I like at the end when they have their breakthrough where, you know, he he's trying to go into her mind and they go into his instead. It shows her power with that of her mm-hmm. being able to push back. And that she, you made a good point. She is projecting herself as a little girl in his yeah. mind. And because he, she is projecting his his state because whenever he would go into his mind before he would have hair uh-huh. and in this you know it's so it's, it's her projecting the image with his of course without his hair because she would not know otherwise mm-hmm. and um no, but she oh did. she did she, she did. would have known yeah. because of apocalypse but that's how she sees him now right, right? and uh, but she still sees herself as that little and then girl also too he also then still sees her as a little girl there is that too right? yeah so it shows that he hasn't been able to see her as an adult as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's why the there issue. needs to have been another movie. Right. That shows that relationship. Yeah. Right. And him coddling her. Yeah. Right? Where he's he's because you can you can tell that he's impressed with her power, but he's also really scared of it. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to control it, just like they showed in the original X-Men movies, true, too, mm-hmm. that he. He desperately wants control as well. He yeah. he is impressed that there is something more powerful than, but he's not accepting of it at the same time. Yeah. And if he keeps her a little girl, she won't grow up and become more powerful, right? Yeah. He can still be the one in control. And there, there's and, the thing of the thinking of the mutant powers and all that. The dangers of it is that people can then say control them mm-hmm. by teaching them to grow right and it's yeah. like any it's like any person if you don't give them the opportunities and the skills and all that they're never going to grow and become better yeah right so and in, you know it's it's how many people actually do that now in the world mm-hmm. right if i don't teach them and give my child the opportunities they'll never outshine me or yeah. something like that you know it's, it's bound to happen oh yeah so and that that's the thing that there there is a good underlining message in what the story was trying to say yeah uh but there were just some follies in the execution yeah i think i don't like all the aliens i really don't yeah and i don't like I know that the the you know original more story is is space based, which is cool, but mm-hmm. rather than the other weird version that they had of it being actually in just inside of her only, so I kind of like there was an outside force that was then amplifying her what we apparently see as the existing Phoenix power mm-hmm. in her. Um, but the alien thing was just weird because they were like weird, super powered, invulnerable yeah. things, right? Yeah, I didn't like how much it was just like they were like zombies and they were unstoppable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you find out too that the, the director claims that some of this was was changed to fit with the merger 
Mm. uh with uh with disney and all that and that they were supposed to be scrolls but at the same time they don't fit scrolls at all so they would have had to so it was just the fact that they could change shape was about the scrolls and that was it yeah like you know they were they were they were impervious to everything and could heal within instants and they just they were like clay yeah yeah you know and that's one thing that kind of bugged me because it was just like it made it really feel hopeless right Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, I thought it was funny how much it sound, how much it sounded like, uh, Captain Marvel with, and, you know, with, with the, the way it looked like Captain Marvel with the weird, well, see, that's where the stuff. director also was saying that there was controversy within the pro because they said they had to change things yeah. because Disney was, because they came out a month apart. Yeah. And then right. with them, with the, the line, you know, your emotions make you weak and no, oh, they make me strong. I'm like, wow, that sounds just like Captain Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was funny. So, but, um. Uh, I I think I think one of the things too is Jessica Chastain was just useless in the role yeah. as the alien leader. Like they could have cast anybody, yeah. And I think they could have saved a lot of money if they cast somebody else that was a no name, yeah. And because anybody could have done that role, I'm sorry. Yeah, she wasn't a great A acting or no. anything like that. It no. was the, the character was kind of throwaway. So it's honestly. like it's like if you just casted someone nobody to be in the role. Because she was the one selling the movie. Extra $20 million could have gone to clean up some effects. Yeah. Right. Kiddo, his, the one thing he didn't like, it was quite funny, when they their final battle and uh, Gene and, and Va- uh, Va- Vax or whatever yeah. her name was, um, were holding on to each other and like zapping power back and forth and then flying into space. He's like... I hear him. That is so corny looking. Yeah. He didn't like that. They look, they, they looked like they were obviously floating on a platform standing yeah. together. He said they looked too stiff mm-hmm. and it just didn't look like they were floating. Yeah. Right. And, uh, it's impressive to see how he is being able to change and describe things better. This mm-hmm. actually kind of helped with the little mini reviews. We're getting more out of him rather than it was good or not good. Yeah. He is pointing stuff out and actually that he likes or dislikes. Us, yeah. Or, yeah. So I thought that was interesting. I was like, yeah, I, I see what you're talking about there. It was kind of like, oh, wow, this looks weird. Yeah. Well, he he overall liked the movie. He thought it was better than X3. Yeah. Uh, because it reminded him more of the cartoon with things. Uh, he liked he definitely liked this version of the Dark yeah. Phoenix story. And he felt it felt it was less cheesy in a lot of cases mm-hmm. um, where uh, X3 he felt was really cheesy. Uh, but those few scenes, especially that was... Uh, was like, yeah, his words here were look too stiff like a mannequin. Yes. Right? So <laughs> he liked uh he liked when the whole they were in little bubbles and the train derailed mm-hmm. and it kind of exploded and, and everything. And that was an okay part for sure. But the the this the train scene was interesting to see a battle of them and everything mm-hmm. like that. Um it went on too long. But it went yeah, it went because of the the in, invulnerable yeah. aliens, right? Yeah. That was the problem. You know, so. and for me it was too with Nightcrawler being so meek until finally someone died and then he like stepped up and was kind of badass. So what do you think about the oh yeah, oh Kittle like when he when well, Nightcrawler yeah, stepped up. He's like demon-y. I like went all demonic. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. What do you think of the end of it with her dying and then renaming the school with their nice chintzy sign? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so who 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 puts a sign for a school on a hook? <laughs> like, when they have to rename it because people die? <laughs> like it's an interchangeable sign. Well, like Charles didn't die though. He just left. I know. But but just that fact. But she that, died, so they renamed yeah. it. Yeah. But just that idea. Well, that's fine. They, in the current comics, it is actually jeans. Oh, it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. There's a, I forget what run it is, but they change it over oh, okay. to jeans um, because when they find out that Xavier had done a lot more shady shit, mm, and, his name know, gotten tarnished. tarnished and then he died and then. Oh, OK. But yeah, so him retiring and then, you know, I didn't um, mind that, you know, should Beast is headmaster. That's never been in the comics. Yeah. Storm's always been, but Storm's too young. Yeah. So it made sense made for sense that, for Beast that too, shift yeah. and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah, the sign thing really bugged me. Yeah. Because, like, people steal stop signs, and those things are, like, pretty heftily screwed in. Yeah. You know, they, he just went over and placed the sign. I know it's well, a... You know, if he, he could have just been the sign there, and it would have had the same effect. Yeah. No different than Scott suddenly putting the sign up there. You know what? There's a place he could have used that money for firing Chastain and, <laughs> and used the same effect, and he could have used his little, like blast to like weld it weld it on there that would have been fabulous right yeah so that was <laughs> cyclops welding that would that be an actually, excellent yeah right why hasn't that ever been done yeah in the comics like him you know going off and becoming a welder yeah showing that his powers are actually useful yeah you know? i don't know if you could 
if he has the, I mean, control, control to be able to do something. You know, in age, I don't know what. Maybe it's too heat, too much. No, heat. in Age of Apocalypse and stuff like that. Um, not the movie, the comics and stuff like that. He's been able to focus. He's able to write things on the wall. Like, but it would it just, just burn advisor. through things? Though, I mean. We're talking about a fictional character with fictional abilities. Oh, tomorrow I'm going to go talk to the guys and be like, okay, so in this situation, <laughs> would he be able to weld with his I'm pretty rings? sure because he's... And they're going to look at me and like, I don't know who Cyclops is, so... <laughs> it's all the matter of the, the visor, because the visor's supposed to have a control on the... That's why it always touches his ears. It's not just a button to open it. Oh, okay. It's supposed so it's to also have a, like a, a, like like a dial kind of like... So we can open because and, I mean you can't. See, just, that's something that's that a problem with done. the laser though. It's 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 actually going to burn through something, right? I mean you can't burn through the metal to, to weld it. You have and the other thing too is you don't just heat metal up to put it together. You have to put in something to it. So yeah, I know that, but I'm okay. just saying like he could be a welder still. I know he could still be a welder. Well, now they're they're bringing out like all fancy laser welding actually now. So, that's going to be a new thing. We want to look at some of those machines. It's going to be. So Cyclops laser welding. I'm just saying that that's, that's you know, fabulous. He, that's where that's where it needs to be a movie. He needs to like have like run off and become a welder. That's where he went. He didn't die. My in boss X3. should be Cyc. His name is Scott. He could be Cyclops <laughs> welding. <laughs> X3. He didn't die. He gave up. And he just. It's like when people like put their clothes at the end of a river or something, and the note that says I can't take it. He left his glasses and went off and became a welder. Oh okay. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So, because um, <laughs> in Canada we we like their tradesmen, right? In Alberta, he would have been able to go off and do that. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because he was up in Alberta. <laughs> he just went off and worked on he the just, rigs. Like I went off to the oil sands. <laughs> um, where, <laughs> where where are we? <laughs> that would have happened. Huh? I think we're talking. We're done with Dark Phoenix. Um, you know, it wasn't as bad as I thought. You know, but it, it, they're not my favorite of the X Men movies. Yeah, you know, I think they could have been better. Yeah, I think it was kind of a a letdown for the series to end on that way. Um, but at the same time, you know what? With Disney buying Fox now, we're going to get to see the X-Men show up in. All I hope is that they learn and put them in costumes. Yeah, that's what I want. And if they don't, they have. I mean, it's really well, would be weird because considering all of the adventures, they've all. Uh, they got you know, some. They all have. So, they they have all have costumes, costumes that so are very no for them nods, at least to yeah. some form. Like, you know, if they can make Doc Strange and. Well, if they can make Captain America. Yeah. There's no the, reason yeah. why they can't make the X-Men have costumes yep. that are accurate. So a lot of rumors that are swirling about that is that it's going to be um, after, you know, uh, the multiverse of madness. So Doc Strange's mm. multiverse adventure could be the answer to where mutants are going to come from. And they oh, okay. might be doing something with like the ultimate comic style mm. uh, versions. Uh, so there is still the rumors that they might still pilfer these versions and might bring them over. Mm. So I could see more Fassbender and, uh, and I don't know. I don't know about that, but at the same time, I, at the same time, they almost should just start afresh. No, I think they should too. Um, I mean, I love them, but I think if they did start fresh, then you have completely new precedents. So you don't have yeah. anything that you expect of them to yeah. be able to act because it's, it would be unfair to those actors to say, now you're going to play this, but we want you to not play those characters, but also play those characters. And it's like, it's confusing. You're I getting think it'd too be much better Superman to just, returns. And that's why I I believe that Hugh Jackman shouldn't be in this. Well, he's, he's even said, though, he's like, I'm looks, I look forward to seeing who's, who takes it yeah. on next. And like, because, you know, they need to they need to think about it and make their plan like they would like they did with Avengers mm -hmm. and figure out ages that they want for people and make sure they cast you know, long-term feeling, not yeah. just right now what looks good. And and think about the development of each of those characters. Yeah, and where they want to be with them. Yeah, right? and not be stuck with the constraints of their ages right now. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, because it's, it's still going to be like five years out, especially with this yeah. whole pandemic. Yeah. Everything's put on hold, and everything's going to be later, so yeah. you, you won't be able to have the same people. Yeah, so right? I think that, you know, I think everyone would be better off to just start brand new mm -hmm. fresh, and it is what it and is. And that's you know? one thing, is that... that People have openly accepted multiple Jokers throughout the years. Right. So we should be okay. And everyone has their favorite version. Yeah. Right. 
So we should be open to accepting to see someone else take the reins of something like Wolverine. Okay. Hugh Jackman did a great job. I, mean, yeah. I don't want to take anything from him. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, at the same time, there's bound to be someone else out there that can do equally good of job. Yeah. And there has it, to be. We, you know, even like Batman, we've seen multiple actors, right? Mm-hmm. So I think, I think this, you know, with just even Spider-Man, like yep. everyone brings something different to the table, depending on what and the story And we tells. all know that it, the story is also a huge component of it, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's going to... It's going to depend on all of the whole group effort of everything. Yeah. So, so I, I, I'm curious to see what they're going to bring because it's going to be wild once they do bring them in. And yeah, I, I hope they bring costumes. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. That's like the biggest full thing. Full yeah. masks, everything. Because like everybody else in those Avengers movies wears masks. So, yep. There's no reason why he can't you know, have a mask. And that's honestly going to be, I think, if you if you debut those costumes. <sighs> As, I think that'll I think that'll just seal a lot of people's worry about like if it's going to be good or not. If you have costumes in there, I think they they could they could literally just show those costumes on mannequins and I'd be like, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you you give me comic esque accurate costumes? Yeah. Like oof. yeah. I'm spent. I'm smoking in the corner. Right? <laughs> like nice. Okay, so we should probably move to Logan. Yeah, so we decided to watch Logan. We did not let Kiddo watch Logan. No, we did not make that clear. <laughs> uh, instantly when I saw that there was 54 uses of fuck uh, in the parental guide, I was like, yeah, probably not. Uh, that was the first, like, you know, swearing isn't just the only thing I look at, but it yeah. was like, it was like, that was the first thing I saw. You're I like, like, yeah, no, can't get around that huh. one. <laughs> and then the next thing was like the gratuitous violence. And I was like, yeah, okay, sure. So Logan is... Uh, Hugh Jackman's swan song. It was his retirement party. Yeah. Uh, they allowed him to do an R-rated Wolverine finally after 20 years almost of playing the character. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that was... Uh, so, tw- it had, the time fr- frame for it is 2029, it says. Yeah, so not too far away. Yeah, look at that. So, uh, it wasn't super fi- futuristic. No, by all means. But as... it was just the concept of them being older, right? Yeah. Um, so, Xavier is in his 90s. And he is basically, his brain's starting to go and he's starting to have seizures. Yeah. And so he, apparently, we don't know what happened in, was it Westchester? Yeah. But he apparently would have killed people. I Probably was, had a seizure and... I'm assuming from it, could because... Probably killed a mass amount of people with it. A lot. Because well, they're saying, like, mutants went extinct, so... Well, yeah, so they've been much. saying what has been... 25 years since any new mutants yeah. had been born, though. So, so something had happened Maybe with Maybe he was mutants. connected to Cerebro. Maybe. And had a seizure. Oh, that would be pretty bad. Did he kill out all the mutants? And... Right. Oh, interesting. Uh, so, yeah, no that mutants would be are being my born. Thought, right? Yeah, so did he wipe them out somehow? And the and... reason why Wolverine's alive, too, is because I, I think it's because of he was able to function because no one else is. Oh, well, like when he has his seizures, yeah. Because, I think it's because of the animantium. That makes sense. His brain would be somewhat shielded from yeah. it, right? Uh, so, yeah, you basically everyone kind of freezes and is starting, they can't do anything at all, People right? Fall over. And because uh, Caliban was saying he couldn't breathe at all yeah. and that type of stuff when you're close to him. And uh, so he's been taking care of him he's hiding him out in a little shanty Shielded. thing in uh, mexico. mexico so uh so they're on the run essentially like that right and, yeah uh, so yeah so and know, of course logan is not well no no he's you're very sick they never actually say it but i'm assuming it's supposed to be that the team is poisoned. well and what they say at the end though was that uh he he's he seems like he knows what's wrong mm-hmm. and then they had made a uh, he he made a nod that that's what's probably they, well him. they say the stuff that's inside you is killing you, yeah right? so, exactly so. but that could even be a reference to emotional turmoil like yeah. you know depression can kill people like yeah true you know that but idea. but you know obviously with with Caliban he was saying he was sick he's he's yeah. got some sort of cancer or something because he said you know there's there's pus around his his claws and everything yeah. and Calvin said he can smell the sickness on him so yeah likely he is decaying on the inside I mean. If his, if he's gotten to that point where his healing factor is not there, he's almost 150 years old at this point. Yeah. Um, then you know he wouldn't be able to fight off the effects of the antimantium anymore, mm-hmm. right? So, so here here's one thing um, that I think is cool to see was when that movie opens and he's you know this guy's trying to jack his ride, and we get to see Wolverine in his full fledged like violent glory. Yeah. You know, uh, as- shoving his claws out through the face right like it was just fantastic and it makes you want more r-rated wolverine 
right? Yeah. Just because it was just bloodily fantastic. <laughs> right. Limbs being cut off. I and... like how he tried to tell them to stop. Yeah. Too, right? It was just like, no, I, you know, please stop. Don't do this. And they're just like, whatever. And uh, he, you know, then he tried to just beat them down and they still wouldn't do it. So like, okay, I'm going to kill you now. Yeah. <laughs> Like, he tried. Yeah. And I, it's a great scene. Yeah. Uh, the movie is directed by James Mangold. He also did The Wolverine. Yes. Uh, so. So he had a little bit more freedom on his action scenes now this time. So. Yeah. And it was, it was, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty awesome opening to a movie. Yeah. You know, the one thing I was going to mention was, was because we had had that whole nod that Wolverine's blood was taken in Apocalypse and all that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish there was that almost that connection was connected to this yeah right but at the same time they make nods of like that this could be the other timeline right from how many times did his blood get stolen possibly yeah too, right? so it's just, it, it yeah. well because it's it's all based still on alkali so yeah. it's it's this other gen gen place fused with alkali as well yeah. right so they would have had it right and so they're growing all of these they can they're gathering all of this blood which fits with them gathering all the blood work from them in like say vietnam and mm-hmm. everything like that too right yeah so, so there's lots of like could be's and couldn't be's and all that yeah but the idea is basically someone shows up asking for wolverine's help yeah um and uh it all hits a fan after that. And then this mercenary looking guy is like, oh, I'm looking for her and we're trying to solve all this. And of course, he doesn't want to have anything to do with it. And uh, and now you find out that Laura shows up, this little girl, and X-23. they don't know why. And she's X-23, right? So, so she is savage. Slash I, like, I like how they introduce her with the fact that, you know, you can tell she's got this weird like not fear of mm-hmm. the guys that come in there, right? Yeah. And then you have that off scene screaming and bloodshot and then she comes out and kicks the guy's you know, head i remember them. when we first watched i was like i was like you know he had all the screaming and all that and i was like oh man they're gonna show her like going berserk mm. um without actually showing us that and then when they go right into it like because i had forgotten about that too like going right into it after mm. i was like they give you that tease where you like feel like you're not gonna get to see it then the head rolls and then she just goes ape shit on them and right just like you know, and it's it's really masterfully made. Yeah. Um, as she flips around and slices and dices. And well, and it, how tiny she is too. Mm-hmm. I love how she's taking out their legs and everything. Yeah. And like she's just flipping around. She's just this. She's very the little girl though herself plays a really good feral animal. Mm-hmm. It fits really well with with the style of the character that they were that they were creating labs, never seeing. They don't know how to be people. Yeah, they're just creating and, weapons. Yeah, and she's just a crazy little yeah. Wolverine animal, right? Like it fits so. Yeah, so that that was really cool to see, and then you got to see her her toe claw as well, and that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm used to seeing Laura more as a teenager. Yeah, so there was a little. It's a little odd, but at the same time, it's one of those ones where if they had been able to continue, then yeah. who knows what you could have come up with. Right? I thought it was interesting too at the beginning with Caliban saying, you know, he's one, he's just completely mumbling about some other mutant and all this. Like he sounds crazy, mm-hmm. and they just don't want to believe anything. And he's completely correct on all this stuff that there's another mutant around, and he seems to know who she is, and so he's totally fine. Yeah, and I thought that was quite funny. Well, even because that. they make the note of like, you know, you need to go to Liberty, uh, the Statue of Liberty, basically. And mm-hmm. Wolverine was like, well, no, that happened years ago. No one's waiting for us there, and all that. And yeah. then when he goes to meet them. Turns out to be the motel has got the Statue of Liberty at it, right? Yeah. So, so, so he knows keep, these things. Yeah, they're keeping Charles doped up so he doesn't have seizures. Yeah. Right? And, uh... But then it also, you know, neuters his power a bit more. Well, it doesn't actually. They think it does. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and then when he doesn't take his medicine, medication, it goes through. So you can tell that back and forth with things, right? And uh, so it's interesting. I think, I think that character to see that him getting older and going a little bit more crazy, but also being lucid was sad and impressive. Like the way mm. he played, like playing the character with that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it was just, it was a very emotionally intense movie. Patrick Stewart right? did a great job. He did a great you know, job of it. Film. He has a silliness and he looks, he's just the crazy old grandpa. Yeah. That's, you know, lucid once in a while. And, right. Yeah. It was honestly, it was trippy. The one time when he rolled out, when he, they first were, he had kind of rolled out of the, in, out into the sun, they were trying to get out of there and everything, how much he looked like my grandpa. Yeah. And it was just like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, yeah, well, yeah, you see that and right. Yeah. You know, it was quite funny. 
but it's interesting to see like that 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 story of Logan having the idea of having a daughter, even though it mm-hmm. is a clone, basically. Yeah. Um, it's interesting they never really fully state all what's up with her. It's just it's hinted at, and there is the idea of how if you have the comic knowledge, you know these things, right? Look. So. Hmm? Like what? Like that she's actually like a clone. Oh, okay. Just, well, I, oh, right? I thought the the nurse, the video was saying that they were creating them. Yeah, but them, but right? like but the actual like because I mean, it's so horrible. They were literally kidnapping women and then growing mutants out of their yeah, different. But they never talk yeah. about the fact that that she is X twenty three. Really? Oh right? yeah, they, they never, never, they refer, never say, They just referred to oh so X twenty four. What do you think well, of X twenty four? Let me finish my thought first. <laughs> okay. Um, the fact that they never say like the fact that they have twenty two. Like they mm. don't know how many like from ten I guess. Until they have all these failures, until they realize that they have to cross his genes with with the the her female genes oh, okay. to create. That's why she's successful because they actually right? created a, a they bred someone basically yeah, rather than of creating, creating an actual clone. full yeah. clone. Okay, so so then what is X twenty four in that? What did they because they they started talking about it and it sounded more like it was like because then it doesn't quite fit because then it made it sound more like that was the clone. Yeah, things, that, that's so. what I'm saying. The movie, yeah. the movie doesn't really define any of that, yeah. right? Because um, what they're saying is that they try to create an own being, and they realize that they couldn't create a being because a grown being has its own desires. Yes, they created X24 to just be pure rage. Yeah, okay, right? that's and, what it was, and it's that kind of thing. I, you know, I like Logan, but the thing I don't like about it is I don't like the X24 aspect. Yeah, I, I feel that. That was the one thing I didn't like either. Yeah, I feel like it should have been Sabretooth. Yeah. I really feel like it should have been that when they they realized that they needed to clean up their mess, they needed to pull out something that they had had in storage. That would right? have been cool. Maybe if it had been like Deep Freeze or something like that. Yeah. Been you know, cool or or... Some, something weird or, you know. Or... Well, it would have been a better battle <clears throat> for it than him fighting himself. Yeah, like... right. I think like they were trying to get too symbolic with that almost. Yeah. Or, or. If you're gonna do this and you're you're living in an else worlds, mm-hmm. then make it Dakin, right? Mm. His son. Yeah. Even if it's a clone, but it's that version, right? Like do something do something different. Don't yeah. don't do the, the You weird. had options. Because then the CG look looked funky it was in a couple so scenes. Weird. Yeah. Right? So the idea where if they did the Dakin thing even, it would have been like, here's here's one kid, clone kid, that is good mm-hmm. and here's one that's not yeah right like what do you what do you do in that scenario right? yeah like um or or i think it, i still think it should have been saber tooth yeah um there's i just think that would have been a cool way to end the series well, it would have been a cool tie back even to whatever timeline you want it to be <laughs> whatever you actor know, they cast whatever it is um this but, time um, saber tooth played by the rock <laughs> That would have been ridiculous. Um, but you can see it. But I can... Uh, kind of, yeah. But... Uh, okay. You know what would have been a cool um, Sabretooth is the guy that plays... Uh, is it actually Eric? Uh, from for, um, True Blood. Oh, Sir Skarsgård? Yeah, Skarsgård. Because he's so tall. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, that would be a cool Sabretooth. Yeah. That would be cool. So... Um, I think Will Forte should have done <laughs> I'm just throwing out names. Just throwing out names. He's got the crazy beard. Yes. Yes, he does. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that would have been cooler, I think, to do that. So. Yeah, I, th- I think like that. That when I rewatched that movie, that I think that was the thing that bothered me the first time I watched it too. Yeah. It just I didn't like the fact that it was just like the idea that the clone upon clone of of Wolverine, mm-hmm. right? And yeah, I think it should have been something that was a tie back to his past of some sort. Oh, well, I thought it was weird, too. And or, the scientist, you know like, sits there and yells at him like a dog. Like, <laughs> really? That was your idea of how you're going to control him is just tell him to stop? Yeah. Like, what? Or, you know what? I don't know. Omega Red, right? Mm. Like, something something more from his past yeah. that would have been more of, like, a holy crap, yeah. you know, moment. Um, I think, yeah. Yeah, so... Well, but I still like the movie. It's it's a depressing film. It's not a feel good film. Not at all. It definitely doesn't make you feel like energized at the end of the movie. I mean, other than the fact there's yeah, there's this group of mutants, but you don't know what happens to them afterwards. Right. I mean, it's not gonna be the first time, but yeah, uh, I think it's cool that they mentioned the idea that the comics were created after about them and all yeah. that. You know, it, it kind of does in some way show the dichotomy of film fans versus comic fans. Yeah, right. 
uh, in it within its own self. It's got its like meta moment. Yeah. Uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Well, because how angry he is about the comics that he's basically saying the movies were the real thing and the comics are just the stories yeah. and the fluff and yeah, it was so, interesting. So there's like there's and of course the whole story there. of course what happens to Charles and everything is just horribly depressing and mm-hmm. sad. But you know at least he had that final good night. Mm-hmm. You know where he he didn't die, you which know. makes it even more sad. Right. right? It's super that whole sad. family that whole oh, scene of that God. whole family. But you know at least you didn't die at a you know metal barrel in the de- in the in Mexico yeah, right in this bed but With that fucking albino <laughs> yeah exactly sorry albinos <laughs> <laughs> um but you know even yeah the scientist isn't there i get it but the, it's not like the corporation's gone completely i mean you still have all this horrible aspect of the government it's not mm-hmm. going to be like the entire thing folded just because he killed those people right there yeah and uh so you there's a lot of horribleness out there still and yeah and then with the family that they find it's just this nice family yeah go, yeah it's so sad it's just it is a sad movie yeah like it's it's really it's sad. like it's, gives you no hope for the future no there is no hope it's like, it's like it's, that was the that was the end yeah of of mutant kind, mankind, right. I don't know, right? <laughs> just that feeling of like you know, your future future's just bleak and all that. And like yeah. I know these kids get to run off and, and be whatever they're gonna be into their world. You know, and like, honestly, when you see that when they, when he gets to, to Dakota, South South Dakota, North Dakota, um North Dakota, I guess it would have been. Um they're for the life that they were in and how like completely out of no knowing how to exist in society that she is, they're relatively well adjusted as a group yeah. for being lab rats. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was Richter like, really kept them under control. Apparently. <laughs> oh, you know, that's one thing I watched. I remember when, when, when he was like being pulled up into there with on the, on the stretcher and all that, mm. it just gave me like this weird, like hook vibe. Oh yeah. The good, yeah. Right? Like, it was like the, the lost the, boys, lost there. boys were there. Right. It was even the, the big, the big kid too. Yeah. Like, um, the little chubby yeah. kid. Yes. <laughs> like, and then the trimming, the beard and everything, the, the beard trimming. I like, I just had this hook vibe. Like yeah. it was like one moment, one scene. Well, they were like, what? you know what? I like Spielberg movies and I want to make a scene that is like an ode to an old Spielberg. Like well, when it was happening and you're like, and suddenly it's become the Goonies. <laughs> right. We had this brief moment of like, everything's super violent and dark and then it's like the little Ewok scene yeah and then it went to super dark and horrible and he's all jacked up on medication on like you know yeah that was pretty cool strung out and like just like running and screaming and yeah that's that's how I want to die yeah (laughs) screaming through the forest (laughs) Ah! (laughs) interesting okay so, so yeah, there we so go. That's how yeah, you know that I'm going to go. I'm just going to jack myself out on a whole bunch of like insane <laughs> drugs. Just, every, just, run, just vial of every drug inv- imaginable and just go run through the, the forest. forest. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> I expect you to be 150 when you do it. Exactly. Yeah. It's the only of way course, it's going to happen. Right? You know, come on. So, so there you go. When I become 150. Yep. This is what's happening. That is what's happening because yeah. if I live till I'm 150, Damn. You, you you deserve it. <laughs> I'm going to try every drug possible. And see what happens. <laughs> okay. Well, that got weird. That got um, weird. But yeah, you know, I, I still enjoy the movie. It's, it's definitely not one that I'd be like, it's on my like repeat list to watch because it is so depressing feeling. Yeah. Um, it, but it's a good, it's a good film. Yeah. Like, a, you know, as a whole. Um, biggest thing is that the CG was a little muddy with with twenty four, yeah. and I still wish that it had been Sabretooth, and that's still a feeling that I have yeah. from the original watch. Yeah, um, I think that just would have been really awesome mm. to to have seen that. Yeah, you know, and then maybe we could have actually gotten like the Hey Runt moment because we've never had him call Wolverine <sighs> a runt. So yeah. that's what I want when it's MCU missing. takes over the short actor and a large saber tooth. See? So Skarsgård needs to play saber tooth. Right? You gotta find someone we need that's to tall. Find, and what's his face? Uh, someone someone short. Someone under under six feet. Yeah. You know. So Mike's gonna make his Wolverine debut. <laughs> <laughs> Guess I'm going to the gym. Yep. <laughs> um, I'll be too old by then. Mm, probably, but... <laughs> Well, with how long the movie's going to take to go out, but <laughs> you'll be a sprightly. Sprightly. Oh, yeah. yeah. You have a sprightly face. Sprightly. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm going to go get hardened. 
<laughs> old, old, old uh, Wolverine hardness. Yeah, you can go run through the woods. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna start drinking whiskey and smoking cigars. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Huh. I don't think you're gonna really get. That's gonna help you get jacked at the gym with that. Not, if I kinda... just drink whiskey and smoke cigars, if nothing else, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Smoker's lung. Oh yeah, we're doing good. Uh, so what's uh? Do we have anything left in our X May? Uh, you know what? You and me are going to uh, finish X May with the Deadpool movies. Yeah. So that one's going to drop a little earlier. Yeah. Um, we're going to do a quick and dirty. We're going to sneak that into the tail end. Of yeah. May. We're going to do a little DP action, um, <laughs> just in time. Sneaky for... DP action. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, there's two of them, so <laughs> it is DP. Um, oh, this is fantastic way to end this one, right? It was good stuff. Uh, so we're going to do that because you know it is part of the X Men universe. And I have something I want to talk about. Oh, oh. With with that and how it ties into things because okay. it's interesting. Uh, about a certain scene and how it fits into everything in the timeline. There we go. Uh, but so yeah, we're gonna try to figure that out. So it, it'll be it'll be the the next episode will be that, and then we're gonna take a little a week break. You're not you're, you're still gonna no, get it. It's a surprise. Then then they just don't know what's happening. Okay, yet. hey, you don't know. We're not gonna double. We'll, we'll let you know next week yeah. on the DP episode. Yes. <laughs> well, there'll be so much DP action, you can't contain it. They'll be DP in your ears because there'll be two of us in your ears. So with the Deadpool action, I just need to stop him now. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Deadpool. I don't know what Jeez, all you no, people, people are thinking. Ah. Deadpool. I know. Right. Uh, so but yeah, so it'll be X-Men part five. So am I allowed to Deadpool say I'm excited edition. for the DP? <laughs> I guess <laughs> I mean, if you if you want, yeah, you should be excited. Yeah, ah, this is good stuff. It is good stuff. Yeah, okay, like good old fashioned DP <laughs> next week for all you peeps. <laughs> well, everyone, it's been fun. It has been fun. It's been a great X May. Yeah, it actually has been a lot of fun watching all of these. So. Right, and then seeing them all and just kind of you know getting an opinion on it and with kiddo watching them. You know, enjoy it. Creating see, a little movie critic out of him. You know, well, he's, he's enjoying it and he's enjoying watching the cartoon. And, yeah. you know, I'll be curious to see if he does want to pick up any of the books. He he looked interested. And then the moment I said, well, you, you're going to do it. And well, he was if, like, I, eh. if I don't buy him any new manga, then that will help. That's true. If we just put it next to his bed and be like, this is what you want to read at night. He might read it. I guess so. That. That. So, but uh, yeah, no, it's been totally fun. And it's been it's been nice to have a theme to run through this may because you know usually we'd have new movies and new things to talk about so let the pun palooza continue <laughs> pun palooza dp <laughs> uh but you know stay rad everybody thanks for joining us everyone have a wonderful day thank you for listening want more rad content follow us on facebook instagram and twitter and don't forget to subscribe rate us and leave us a review and remember be excellent to each other and party on dudes